Namo Buddhaya. Welcome back to Monks in the Morning from Colombo Dhamma Friends of Mahame Onawa. I'm so glad that you're joining us so we can spend time together now as Kalyanamitta. Do you remember that word, Kalyanamitta? It means a special kind of friend who likes to help us practice the Supreme Buddha's teachings. And that's what we're going to do together today. Practice the Supreme Buddha's teachings. It's hard to find people in the world to help us practice the Dhamma, so we can be happy knowing that we've found this rare opportunity. Today, we'll talk a little bit about what Christmas is about. Unless one of your parents or relatives are Christians, you may not know what the significance of Christmas is and why it's important to some people. As Buddhists, we should at least know a little bit about these things, especially because people who are Christians may ask us why we don't celebrate Christmas, and it's good to have a clear answer. Now let's go for refuge and take the five precepts. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma sambuddhasse Buddhang saranang gachami Dhammang saranang gachami Sanghang saranang gachami Dutiyampi buddhang saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu Say after me, I observe the precept of Abstaining from killing beings. I observe the precept of Abstaining from stealing. I observe the precept of Abstaining from sexual misconduct. I observe the precept of Abstaining from telling lies. I observe the precept of Abstaining from taking Intoxicating drinks and drugs With the refuge of the noble triple gem I observe these precepts For happiness in this life, for rebirth in heaven, 
to escape from the sufferings of sansara may it help me may it be a blessing sadhu 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 namo buddhaya today i wanted to talk a little bit about christmas now even though we're buddhists it's still good for us to have some idea what this whole christmas thing is about i know that lots of you live in uh, countries where most of the people are christian or if you live in a buddhist country then maybe you go to an international school where many of your friends are christian so it's good for us as buddhists to understand what that holiday is about how it may share some similar things with holidays in buddhism but how it has some things that are very different so we're going to keep this conversation very simple these are just going to be very basic things and because there's all different kinds of forms of christianity i'm just going to talk about the most basic things that are agreed upon by all the different kinds of christians in the world so if we're going to understand christmas we need to understand about two different individuals that are very important in the christian religion the first one is who the christians call god so when buddhists talk about gods usually we're talking about gods plural because we know that the supreme buddha discovered that there are many many different gods that live in the heavenly worlds but for christians they believe in one god and in fact the same is true for jewish people and muslim people in fact maybe you didn't know this but when jewish people and christian people and muslim people refer to god they're actually talking about the same god they just call him different names so for the christians they may use the word yahweh to give god a name and of course for muslims they use the word allah to refer to god but it's all the same god so the other person that's the other individual that's important in christianity is someone whose name is jesus now just like the supreme buddha had a personal name so what was his personal name siddhartha siddhartha gautama was his personal name but after he became enlightened what do we call him the supreme buddha so in the same way jesus is the personal name of this other person important in christianity but he also goes by the name christ so this means son of god and that's what we need to understand about the relationship between these two individuals that christians believe that this person jesus had a human mother her name was mary maybe you've heard that but his father was the christian god yahweh so christians believe that this person jesus is part human part god and in fact christmas is the celebration of the birth of jesus so when people say that they're celebrating christmas the official religious part of that, that they're celebrating is the birth of jesus the most important we can say human being in christianity so christians believe that jesus was born about 2020 years ago now if you're listening to this in the year 2020 you may realize that in the calendar that is used in most countries these days as the official calendar year number 1 in that calendar is said to mark the birth of jesus 
It's the same way, it's similar, that in the Buddhist calendar, the Buddhist calendar is marked off with the Buddha. Now, Jesus was born about 500 years after the Supreme Buddha. That's why there's that about a 500-year difference between those two calendars. So, Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus in a similar way that Vesak is the celebration of who? The Supreme Buddha. Now, for Vesak, it celebrates the, what three things? I'm sure you know. The birth, the enlightenment, and the passing away of the Supreme Buddha. Now, Christmas is only the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Now, Christians don't believe that Jesus became enlightened, like we believe about the Buddha, but they do believe that he passed away in a set of very special circumstances to them, and those things happened around Easter time. That's another Christian holiday that you may have heard about before. We won't talk about that today, but it's enough to know that Christmas is celebrating the birth of Jesus. Now, something that's interesting to know is Christians celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December, right? But actually, the Bible doesn't say exactly when Jesus was born. So some scholars believe that it was actually in a completely different time of the year. So this is where we start to look at the traditions and the culture around Christmas. So, do you know where Jesus was born? So, just like the Supreme Buddha was born in India, and then Buddhism spread throughout Asia, and these days most of the people in India are no longer Buddhists. Well, Jesus was born in the Middle East, in an area that those days would have been called Palestine. These days, uh, it's the country called Israel. So these days, most of the people in Israel are not Christians, even though that's where Jesus was born. So over the centuries, Christianity spread outside of the Middle East, mostly to Europe. And then after that, to North America, eventually to other Christian countries like Australia and New Zealand. So it's in those Western countries where most of the traditions that we associate with Christmas were developed. So, for example, everybody that's lived in a Christian country knows about Christmas trees, right? It's a pine tree that many people will bring into their home, and decorate. This is a tradition that started a long time after the birth of Jesus, and it never happened in the Middle East because they didn't have pine trees like that in the Middle East. It was purely an ancient tradition in Europe that got added in to the Christian tradition. So we can kind of think about it in a similar way to Vesak lanterns. Now, the Supreme Buddha never taught us how to make the Vesak lanterns that we all make today for Vesak, right? And in the time of the Supreme Buddha, we don't know that they made lanterns to celebrate his uh, birth, enlightenment, or passing away. But now that's a tradition that we have, and it matches very well with his teachings. So when we make Vesak lanterns, we're making offerings of light to the Supreme Buddha. So in the same way, people in Christian countries will have these Christmas trees as a way of celebrating Christmas. And just like in Buddhist countries, there may be certain kinds of foods, special foods that people eat at Vesak time. In the same way, there are special foods that get eaten in Christmas time. But this is just a tradition so, 
many, many of the things that we associate with Christmas don't have to do directly with the birth of Jesus. Now, one thing that everybody knows about Christmas is that people give gifts to each other, don't they? Now, Christians believe that this tradition came from the actual birth of Jesus because a few weeks after Jesus was born, there were some men who came from another country far away because they saw signs in the sky, specifically a star, that they understood to mean that a very special person had been born. So they traveled from far away to find this baby Jesus, and they brought with them gifts. Now, not only that, but Christians believe that Jesus himself was like a gift from God, a gift from the Christian God. So both these things have meant that these days people give gifts at Christmas time. So when Jesus was alive, there was no such thing as these Christmas gifts or even celebrating Christmas. This is all something that happened later. But now, it's a very important part of the Christian tradition. And in Christian countries, even people who are not Christian, they still like to give gifts. And even as Buddhists, there's certainly nothing wrong with giving people gifts at Christmas time, because as Buddhists, we believe that it's good to give gifts all the time, right? So that's not something that conflicts in any way. So around Christmas time, your friends who are Christian may ask you, oh, do you celebrate Christmas? And it may even be, if you're living in a foreign country, that your family likes to, to have a Christmas tree as a decoration. You know, if you live in uh, cold countries, you know that the winter time is very dark. Uh, and that's why people like to put up lights for Christmas. Just like people like to have uh, light displays at Vesak, well, in cold countries, Christmas time is a very dark time. The sun goes down very early, and the nights are very long. So people like to celebrate Christmas by having lights. So if that's something that your family enjoys doing, your family may decorate the house in the winter time. So when your friends ask you, do you celebrate Christmas, you can maybe, maybe you do celebrate some of these things. Maybe you do put up lights. But if they ask, do you celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, probably, uh, if your family is Buddhist, you'll say no. And they may ask you, well, do you believe in Jesus? And to that, you would have to say, well, we believe in the Buddha. If they ask if you worship Jesus, you would have to say, well, we worship uh, the Buddha. The Buddha is the person who started the Buddhist religion, and so we celebrate his birth in the springtime in a celebration called Vesak. And so you can explain to them how Buddhism and Christianity celebrate different people at different times of the year. So now we know a little bit more about Christianity, that it celebrates the birth of Jesus, just like Vesak celebrates the birth of the Supreme Buddha, that Jesus was born a long time ago, uh, 500 years after the Supreme Buddha was born, that Jesus was born in the Middle East, just like the Supreme Buddha was born in northern India, Nepal. And now we understand that many of the traditions, like having a Christmas tree and giving gifts, are Christmas traditions that came later and don't really relate exactly to the birth of Jesus. So now, when you uh, see things about Christmas going on, you'll have a little bit more information about that. And there's certainly lots of ways that you can find out about other details about Christmas. You can talk to your parents, they can help you look up things online, because it's good to understand what the people around us are celebrating at these holidays, so we can be happy for them. We can also be confident knowing that even though maybe we're not living in a Buddhist country, 
that we also have our own celebrations that are just as important to us as Christmas is to our Christian friends. So, if you have any questions about these things, you can also send us a message at Monks in the Morning, and we'll try and explain them to you on the air. Namo Buddhaya. Paritta Chanting Kanda Parittam Loving Kindness Towards Royal Tribes of Snakes Now we're going to chant the verses from the Kanda Paritta. This sutta tells the story of a monk who passed away after he was bitten by a snake. When the monks explained this to the Supreme Buddha, he told them that this particular monk had not been practicing metta towards the four royal tribes of snakes. Then the Buddha taught these monks these verses that we're about to chant so they would have an idea how to practice metta so they could be protected as well. So, this is a good set of verses for you to chant every day if you can. Now we'll recite them in Pali and English. Turn to page 29 in your chanting book. Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arhato Samma Sambuddhasse Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasse Virupakke Hime Metang Metang Era Pathe Hime Chabya Pute Hime Metang Metang kanha gotam ke hiche. May I have metta towards virupakas, towards erapatas. May I have metta, may I have metta towards chabya puttas. Towards Kanha Gotamakas also, may I have metta. Apadake hime metang, metang dipadake hime, chatupade hime metang, metam bahupade hime. May I have metta. Towards the footless, may I have metta. Towards those with two feet, may I have metta. Towards those with four, may I have metta. Towards the many footed, mamanga pad ko hinsi. Mamang hinsi di padako, Mamang chato pado hinsi, Mamang hinsi bahu pado. Let not the footless do me harm, nor those that have two feet. Let not the four footed do me harm. No, those end out with many feet. Sabbe sata, sabbe pana, sabbe bhuta chakevala, sabbe bhadra nipasantu, ma kanchi pap magma. All beings, all living creatures, all beings who have come to birth, may good fortune bless them all. May no harm come to them. Appamano buddha, appamano dhammo, appamano sangha, pamanavantani sirin sapani, Ahi vichika satapadi unna nabhi sarabhu musika. 
कता में रखा कता में परिता पाटिक मंत भूतानी सोहं नमो भगवतो नमो सतनं सम्मा संबुधानंति Immeasurable in virtue is the Buddha, immeasurable is the Dhamma, immeasurable is the Sangha, measurable are creeping creatures, snakes, scorpions, centipedes, spiders, lizards and rats, Due to their defilements, I have guarded myself, I have made my protection. Depart from me, all you beings. I worship the Blessed One and the Seven Supreme Buddhas. Ete na satche na suvatti hotu By this truth may there be well-being Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu We're so happy you were able to join us today. We hope that you learned something new and we really hope that you can use what you learned as you go about the rest of your day. If you have any questions for the Bantes, we'd love to have you send them in so we can answer them on the air. Just click on the show notes link, and that'll let you know how you can contact us. If you like, you can even record a message on WhatsApp and send it in to us, and we'll play it on the air. So, today, we've collected merit by body, speech, and mind. When we collect merit in this way, we like for others to have happy minds recollecting the wholesome actions that we've done. So, may our teacher, Lokosonya Hunksa, may our parents, our relatives, our friends, all rejoice in this merit. And may they soon experience the supreme bliss of Nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sad, sad, sad. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you.